Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. At sea, the United States Navy is indeed a force to be reckoned with. With an impressive fleet, including several warships, they can tackle enemies anywhere in the world. The U.S. Navy has invested billions of dollars to develop state-of-the-art weapon systems with both offensive and defensive capabilities, which provide the warship with exceptional combat effectiveness. One such system is the Mark 38 25mm machine gun a shipboard weapon specifically designed to protect warships at sea. It consists of an M242 Bushmaster chain gun mounted on a turret, which can be operated either manually or using a remote. The Bushmaster uses an electric motor to drive the moving parts for ammunition feeding, loading, firing, extraction as well as cartridge ejection. The U.S. Navy has installed the MK-38 on several ships either temporarily or permanently to counter fast attack crafts at sea. On May 8, 2017, the U.S. Navy conducted a live fire exercise aboard the USS America. The Marines used a Mark 38 machine gun system to identify, track, and eliminate an unmanned fast attack boat. The test was conducted to evaluate the performance of the Mark 38 and to test the ship's defense capabilities at sea. Large sea vessels are equipped with built-in weapon systems, such as the 50 caliber machine guns. These guns fire 550 to 850 rounds per minute at a range of up to 2,000 meters. Their armor-piercing capability not only proves them lethal against small sea vessels, but also makes them a viable option against aerial threats at sea. The 50 caliber machine gun is one of the earliest weapon systems that were installed on a sea vessel. However, in 1973, the development of the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, or CIWS, changed the course of naval warfare. It is the last line of defense on a ship that automatically identifies, locates, and defends against all incoming threats, including aircraft, anti-ship missiles, and small boats. Phalanx CIWS is equipped with a radar-guided 20mm Vulcan Gatling gun, which fires at a rate of 4,500 rounds per minute. The ammunition is continuously inserted into the drum magazine of the Phalanx CIWS, enabling it to engage and respond to successive threats. Typically, Phalanx CIWS is loaded with armor-piercing discarding sabot and high-explosive incendiary 20mm rounds, which are sometimes mixed while reloading. To ensure that the Phalanx CIWS is deployed rapidly against potential threats, the U.S. Navy frequently conducts targeted and untargeted drills. On October 5, 2017, the Navy conducted a pre-action aim calibration exercise aboard the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln. During the demonstration, the Phalanx CIWS fired a total of three bursts at both a high rate of fire and a low rate of fire. The 
The PAC exercise requires the sailors to perform post-fire maintenance procedures like taking apart the weapon system, verifying the wear and tear of the equipment, regreasing the moving parts of the weapon system, and reassembling the gun for future use. What we're going to be doing tonight, it's a uh, pre-aim calibration. We fire the gun to make sure that the gun and the radar are pointing in the same direction so when we do have incoming, the um, when the radar is tracking the round, the gun is pointing at the round, so when we fire, hopefully we hit it. In addition to the PAC exercise, the U.S. Navy also conducts detect to engage exercises to evaluate the performance of the Phalanx CIWS against low-flying aerial threats. The weapon system identifies the target and launches a burst of rapid-fire projectiles to neutralize it. These demonstrations specifically test the ship's automated radar tracking system CIWS by detecting a low-flying aerial target and providing real-time data to the Phalanx CIWS. The U.S. Navy's warships also use the RIM-116 rolling airframe missile for self-defense and short-range engagements. It's a small, lightweight surface-to-surface -surface air missile that uses infrared guidance to intercept and destroy hostile anti-ship missiles and other airborne threats. The RAM system MK-31 consists of the missile RIM-116 and the guided missile launching system MK-49. The GMLS can hold 21 Ram Block 1 missiles or Ram Block 2 Rim 116 missiles. Additionally, the original weapon cannot employ its sensors before firing. Therefore, it's integrated with the command and control system of the naval platform, which directs the launcher at targets. On U.S. ships, it's typically integrated with the AN-SWY-2 Ship Defense Surface Missile System or MK-1 and MK-2 Ship Self-Defense System. Sometimes, the Phalanx CIWS is modified to replace the 20mm Gatling gun with a launcher that pinpoints its target and fires up to 11 RAM missiles. The setup is known as CRAM, which provides an extended range, along with a high-resolution search and track sensor to maneuver RAM missiles to the target. The U.S. Navy has installed RAM on more than 40 ships, particularly on aircraft carriers and conducted more than 350 live fire exercises to evaluate the performance of this weapon system. Combined statistics of these exercises suggest that RAM got several first shot kills on target and achieved a kill performance above 95% overall. In 2016, the aircraft carrier USS Carl Vinson fired two rolling airframe missiles during a missile exercise. As its name indicates, RAM rolls as it flies, which is why only one pair of steering canards is required. It's a necessity for military ships to have air defense systems on board. These systems launch anti-ship missiles specifically designed to attack hostile ships and large boats. Most anti-ship missiles are of the ski-skimming variety, whereas others use a combination of inertial guidance and active radar homing. A large number of other anti-ship missiles use infrared homing to follow the heat emitted by a ship. However, it is also possible to guide an anti-ship missile by radio command.
on land, air defense systems such as the High Mobility Artillery Rocket System are used to protect ground personnel from aerial threats, such as aircraft, attack helicopters, and drones. HIMARS offers multiple launch rocket system firepower on a wheeled chassis. It carries one pod with either six multiple launch rocket system rockets or one Army tactical missile system missile. The pod is mounted on the U.S. Army's FMTV 5-ton truck and is capable of launching the entire MLRS family of munitions. Besides, the ammunition pod can be switched with the M270 MLRS, but in this case, it's limited to a single pod as opposed to the standard two for the M270 and its variants. Sometimes, HIMARS need to be moved from one shore to another, and hence the Marines use transport ships, such as the landing craft utility to transport them to the desired location. On August 14, 2019, the U.S. Navy demonstrated the mobility and lethality of the HIMARS during a simulated amphibious raid. During the operation, the Marines loaded HIMARS onto a U.S. Navy landing craft utility transporting it to an onshore location for follow-on missions. This capability makes HIMARS an even more lethal and extensive asset. And what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that the HIMARS artillery uh, rocket system, what we're doing is that it fits on the naval vessels so we can conduct the amphibious operations uh, from island to island. Transporting HIMARS shore to shore requires the U.S. Marines to follow critical procedures, which is why they undergo extensive training to handle the transportation of HIMARS appropriately. On August 7, 2021, in the Solomon Sea, the U.S. Marines conducted a training exercise on the deck of the USS New Orleans. The demonstration allowed them to test vehicle maintenance and enhance maritime readiness. These exercises are important for the Marines to transport HIMARS at a moment's notice during wartime. The U.S. Navy uses modernized weapons on its naval platform, which plays a pivotal role in the effectiveness of warfare strategies. From advanced missile systems and naval guns to anti-submarine warfare weapons, the U.S. Navy can counter any modern threat efficiently. These state-of-the-art weapons not only provide the ships with defensive capabilities, but also ensure offensive capabilities to project dominance at sea. The U.S. Navy is continuously working towards equipping its ships with advanced weaponry. And if things work out according to the plan, they might put a laser weapon on a warship soon. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.